this weekend. Uh, we, we interrupted our series on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We'll pick back up on that on Sunday and uh, have prayer on Sunday night. And um, let's get in here. We're talking about um, faith, found, faith foundations or the ABCs of faith. And uh, we started last week, but let's kind of let's kind of recap just a tad because we kind of we kind of rushed out and getting over to the to the Hagen meeting. And it was a good meeting. Hallelujah. And the girls left soon afterwards, so we, we, we did get to see them through last Sunday, Wednesday night. So, uh, seven steps. Let's talk about the seven steps. And that's what we're going to get into down in our teaching. The seven steps to the highest kind of faith. Now, in order for one to develop a successful faith walk, one must gain insight in certain aspects of their walk with God. Now, although God is merciful to us where we are, we should be endeavoring to grow from faith to faith. And listen, God, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after flesh but after the Spirit. God, God gives you room to grow. I understand that. When we preach highest and we preach the ultimate, there is God's grace and mercy is there for you to grow. It's when people take advantage of the grace and the mercy to not grow and not do the things they should do, then it becomes a problem. When you take advantage of it to aid you in growth, that's what it's there for. Amen. So just, just understand that. Praise the Lord. We should strive for the highest kind of faith. Keep in mind that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Praise God. Hallelujah. And last week we just kind of got talking a little bit about, and, and then we're just going to kind of tie right on to there real quick. Uh, the integrity, the first step to the highest kind of faith is having a revelation or a realization or an understanding of the integrity of God's Word. Hallelujah. God's Word is exactly what, is exactly what it declares itself to be, God's Word. That's real simple. Psalm 118, we're just going to read these real quick from last week. Psalm 119, verse 89. <clears throat> We have an entire psalm of a hundred and, oh, how many, 56, 76 verses that all refer to the written word, statutes, pre uh, uh, precepts, and everything. And you got people running around today saying we don't need the word. We just need the Holy Ghost on the inside. That's all we need. Hallelujah. But Psalm 119 verse 89 says, oh, oh forever. How long? Forever. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Well, praise God. Thank God it's alive. Now, if you're reading King James, quick means a living thing, alive. Hallelujah. How many of you ever uh, had your fingernail go down into the quick? Found out that finger was alive, didn't you? Hallelujah. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints of morrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. In the second Peter chapter one, hallelujah, this is what we kind of covered last week. You need to go back and listen to that. That would do you good. Verse 19 through, uh, through 21, we talked about that. And we kind of got hung up here last week. And it, it's kind of hard not, to, it's kind of hard to read this and not get hung up. Uh, we we kind of backed up a little bit uh, to verse 15 where Peter says, Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able to, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, Peter's recounting uh, the, the time that him, Peter, and John were on the Mount of Transfiguration, and Elijah and Moses appeared, on, appeared with Jesus in glory and uh, in preparation for what he had to go through. And for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice, hallelujah, they heard a voice, to him from the excellent glory, that means the heaven above, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now whose voice do you think that was? How many voices say, this is my beloved Son? Yeah. It, was the, it was God Almighty, it was the Father himself. Spoke out of the excellent glory. Hallelujah. Now, man, I'd love to hear that. Man, I would love. Woo, man, I just wish one time I could hear his voice from heaven like that. Oh, man, it would be cool to hear God's voice like that. Wouldn't that be cool? Peter said, we heard it. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. Didn't say we thought about it. Didn't say we perceived it. Said we heard it. 
Hallelujah. When we were with him, that is Jesus, in the Holy Mount. I love this next verse. I just, you need to get out little underlining thingies. Right here. Highlighters. Things where you can put starsies there. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Gina. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. I heard the audible voice of God. God. And Peter said, we, heard, we have a more sure, a more sure word than the audible voice of God. We were with him in the mount. He's transfigured in his glory. Moses and Elijah standing there with him. They heard God the Father speak. And Peter said, we've got a more sure word of prophecy. That's pretty potent. I said, that's pretty potent. <clears throat> Where unto, we talked about this a little bit last week, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. And he says, take heed to what I'm telling you, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture now, see, when people say word to you, if, if God is smarter than dummies. And there's some dummies out there. Yeah. Because if, I'm going to tell you something. If, if the writer had used the, the word word here, they would have said it was the audible voice of God. God spoke to him. He specifically had Peter write Scripture. God is smarter I, it's, it'd be folly to say it this way, but God's lack of intelligence is greater than the intelligence of any man. And he knew boneheads would be here in 2012 preaching on the internet and saying that we don't really necessarily have to have the written word. And so he moved on Peter 2012 years ago or thereabouts to write it in a way they can't misconstrue it except they lie about it. That no prophecy of the Scripture is of any in private interpretation. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that became Scripture. Now we have Scripture. We have the written Word. And Peter says, more sure then you hearing a voice is the written word. I would have loved to have been there and heard his voice. Peter says, you've got something more important. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the written word. We have the scripture. Somebody have said recently, you know, well, they didn't have no Bible when they were preaching back then, but the, new, the apostles didn't have any Bible. I wonder what they were talking about when they said, as it is written. Yeah, right. Wherefore it is written. Hello? I wonder what they were talking about. Peter, I mean Jesus. Jesus said, as it's written in the prophets, as it's written in the law, as it's written in the Psalms, you've heard that it has been said over and over and over again. The New Testament writers, you go through the writings of the New Testament writers, and over and over again, they make reference to the written scriptures they had at the time. Yeah. To, uh, to support what they were teaching. Mm -hmm. You cannot teach doctrine and or revelation without the written word to undergird and support it. Amen. If you cannot bear it out in scripture, you can't teach it. Hello. I'm talking about doctrine. And if, you know, can I say this? And, and I think we're mature enough at this stage in our growth in the Lord to maybe be, maybe be able to say some things and you understand what I'm talking about. You may have some things happen experientially that you can't teach as doctrine. You may, now I'm, listen, I'm, I know a number of years ago this big thing went around called warring tongues. I, I don't doubt you could be in a place of prayer and you get over to the Spirit and you're dealing with things in tongues that, you, that, that, that could be considered spiritual warfare. But you can't go teach that as doctrine. Why? Because there's no Scripture to support it. That's right. good. That's really right. So you can't go teach it as doctrine. Mm -hmm. You may have had an experience along the line because God knew you were in a place of trust that He could trust you to be led by a Spirit and not get flaky. Of course, some people got flaky. Yeah. 
got real flaky and started to see what, when, when did they get flaky? They start teaching it. Yeah. Mm. They started trying to teach people how to do it. Intercessors try to teach people how to, you can't teach intercessors how to intercede. Yeah. Did you know intercessor prayer comes because people get into the spirit, not because you can teach them how to do it? Right. You can teach, you can have people now act like this, go, mm, uh, mm. You, it's like you're imitating a barn, uh, uh, animals on an animal farm or something. You can't teach people how to intercede. That's, that's, intercession comes when you get caught up in the Spirit and the Spirit of God leads you into something. You can't do that on your own. Now you can, you can learn how to make yourself available. But you can't get over there on your own unless the Spirit of God. I, I heard, um, and this has to do with the integrity of God's Word. Don't, don't think I'm not, I, I'm, I'm trying to make a point on a different vein to, to make you see this. A number of years ago, a, a, a well-known minister's wife, and, 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 she's well, and she's known for going, she holds prayer conferences and well-known for, for uh, understanding and, and having some deep, uh, I don't say, I don't know how to use that, but some, some good teaching and some good uh, God and, and, and prayer and, and, and people having prayer meetings and prayer and that kind of thing. But she was praying about something and um, been praying for some time, trying to get an intercession about it, trying to get, get an answer about something. And finally she called, she called Dad Hagen up. I said, Dad, I said, I'm, I'm just not getting anywhere. I haven't prayed about this for some time. He said, that's because the Holy Ghost didn't take and hold with you. Remember, the Spirit himself helpeth us. Helpeth us. The Greek word means, three words in the Greek put together meaning take hold together with against. How be it, the Spirit helpeth, the, the Spirit takes hold together with, against, with us against our infirmities. If he's not taking hold with you, you ain't getting anywhere. Why well, how come he wouldn't take hold? Maybe you're praying the wrong way. You're praying in the wrong vein. You're praying contrary to the purposes of God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Now you can't, listen, do you understand? See, we, we, we think we can force things in prayer. I, I've been getting on this for about past two or three weeks. I'll tell you something, God's talking. We, we, we I was in a, in, in a place recently, and somebody used to go to our church. And, and, and who, the person ministering got right in this vein I'm talking about right now. They left the building almost in tears. I'm telling you, there's some things about staying in the will of God and, and not pushing when the Holy Ghost didn't take and hold. When he's not taking hold, you can't force it. Because you're pushing it out there. He's not taking hold. To, I'm going to tell you something. It's the whole idea when he takes hold together with against. How many of you ever tried to move a piece of furniture by yourself? Now you know when somebody's helping you and you know when they ain't. Hello? Are y'all here? I move front and, I, and you, go, you get the kids to help you, or Jamie to help you, or your wife, you might wife to help me, whatever. And you, you know when they reach a point they can't help you or they stop, they just quit. All of a sudden, it got heavy again. But you're also aware when they do, they do help. It gets lighter. When the Spirit of God takes hold with you, things are different. Now, we got over some things on Sunday night that God's been talking to me about for some time. And, I, and I've talked about actually for several years. But I hadn't really pushed it in prayer. I, I, me and Janie have discussed it. And then nah, this doesn't seem right. Sunday night we got into prayer and some things started happening in prayer about that. And God speaking about that to me. Now I'm not sharing it on purpose. Why? It's some things you don't share until this is the right time. Now I'm not leaving. <laughs> Okay, just say, hey, Jenny, hallelujah. That's, that's, not, that's not what I was praying about, okay? But there was some spe uh, specificity about some things that we had talked, we had discussed just in casual passing. We know that, you know, something needs to be done about this. Something needs to, and he started talking to me about it in, in prayer on Sunday night. <clears throat> well, it wasn't me kind of asking him, should I go do it? It was him telling me it's going to happen. Different, whole different, whole different thing. Oh, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It was a whole different venue. Now here's the thing. Janie had, had, had gone to my office and was sitting in there and praying. And she said, were you praying about such or such? 
I said, yeah. She said, well, I got the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, praise God. I got the exact, I mean, and gave me spe specifics that, that I hadn't talked about. Well, praise God. Yeah, amen. See, when the Holy Ghost takes hold, it's a whole different thing. When you try to push it, you can push it out there and make things happen. I've seen people do it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen people do certain things, push them out there, make them happen, and lose everything. I can think of a, I can think of a minister right now. I can think of a couple. Made some things happen that the Holy Ghost wasn't in. Lost the ministries and their families. Didn't happen right away. Didn't happen in the first five years. Didn't happen in the first seven years. Took about 10 to 15 years for it to actually happen. But they, they happened. They lost the families and they lost the ministry and their families. Both of them were out of the ministry. Out. I'm not talking, you know, uh, struggling. They're out of the ministry. But they, they followed after some things and, and pushed some things and went some directions. Holy Ghost needs to take hold with you. Now we're talking about faith. Well, see, you can't walk in faith. What, what a, now, now, Brother Hagin used to say this a lot. And, and, and actually, I found out he kind of, I, I think he may have gotten it from. But, you know, listen, you understand this thing? When something's in the Spirit, when it gets passed around, it doesn't matter where it got started. It's in the Spirit. It's, it's of the Spirit. Dad Hagin used to say this. But he, Bosworth said it, I think, earlier. His faith begins with the will of God's known. Now, Dad, you know, listen, you know, you, when, when somebody shares something and it becomes revelation to you, you can say it and you can share it. Uh, somebody got mad at me one time because I, I had people say, this is my Bible, my very own Bible. John Osteen did that. You cheated. You copied it from him. <laughs> what does it matter who did it first? There's no copyright on confessions. <laughs> Dear Lord. Man, woman raked me over the coals, wrote me a long, nasty letter. Never came back. Glad. If you ain't got any more sense than that, God gave Billy Goes more brains than that. Or donkeys. <laughs> donkey. <laughs> hey, donkey. <laughs> All right. So now look. If the Holy Ghost doesn't take hold with us together in prayer, how are we going how are we gonna do stuff? Okay, now that's in prayer. Now let's come back over here. How are we going to do things if the Spirit of God doesn't lead us in line with the written word and we have a place to, and a basis for faith? There has to be a basis of faith that is steadfast, unmovable, and unshakable that we can turn, and it's the integrity of God's word. We have to have that. If we don't have that, we're in trouble. Because then Janice could come in this week and say, the Lord showed me. I, had somebody t I hear some people telling me some stuff, and I just, I'm, I'd, I'd get with Brother Hagin. I'd rather hear a donkey brain at 10 morning at midnight and hear such stuff as that. The Lord showed me this, and the Lord showed me that. And every time I hear, they, they say the Lord showed them, but it's always to their advantage. Well, then, how is it the Lord never shows you something where it's not to your advantage? <laughs> That you've got to do some adjustments and changes. Hello? All that matters is if my heart, I've heard this so many times from so many people, all that matters is if it's my heart's right. I ain't got news for you. God's got some stuff to say about your actions. Yeah. Hello? The written word has something to say. That's what the grace people love. They want to deny all kinds of stuff. Say, all God cares about is, you know, that his grace is there. My, he knows my heart. Well, honey, your heart, if it's really your heart and your heart's right, your actions should line up with it. That's exactly right. He, he told me it's all right as long as my heart's right. Your heart ain't right if your actions ain't right. I don't care what you say God showed you. Hell up. The Lord told me as long as my heart's right, it's okay. I'm sleeping with five other women other than my wife. It doesn't matter. My heart's right. <laughs> well, your heart might be right, but we'll be doing your funeral next week. Yeah. As soon as your wife finds out and the other full five women find out, hello, about the other five women, you're in a heap of trouble. <laughs> Amen. 
<coughs> Lord told me I didn't have to tithe because he knew my heart was right. <laughs> the Lord, hey, people come up with all kinds of stuff. Now we got to we have a more sure word of prophecy. If what you're, you're saying God's telling you doesn't line up with the more sure word of prophecy, it ain't God. Yeah, that's right. Bottom line, period, end of discussion. And save it for Oprah. And, by, and Dr. Phil, because they're, they're, they're humanists and, and, and non-godly, and, and, and that's the right platform for that jump. But don't be coming telling me that God's showing you stuff and telling you stuff that the written word says different. Southern, actually down in Texas here, they have something called a flying raspberry. That's about what I'd rather hear than hear that mess. The written word doesn't, you're not alleviated because you hear a voice. If you want to walk in real faith, you're going to have to follow God's word. And he'll speak to you about his word. Now, I heard Dad Hagen say, he said, you know, in, in some cases you have situations where people don't have a Bible or they, they, don't, they, don't, they can't read or whatever. He said, but he knew because he was led by the Spirit. Now, hear what I'm going to say. He said sometimes, it may be a few years, but eventually he found it when the Spirit of God was speaking to him, he actually would go, eventually come across and find that it was actually written in the written Word. Hmm. What's that mean? Don't, if, if God's leading you and, you don't have, and, and, and you're in a place where you don't have the Scripture or whatever and you know it's the Holy Ghost, you'll eventually find out it's in the written Word. What people are trying to do now is they're trying to make it so that whatever you hear is okay. It doesn't matter what the written Word says. It's okay. It's all right to read. It's good to read. It's a good guide, but the voice is more important. Well, if it's really the voice of God, He's going to be speaking what this says. Right. He's not going to tell you something different than this. Lord told me it was all right to be angry. The Lord told me it was all right to do this. The Lord told me, I've had people tell me all kinds of stuff the Lord told them. My son just got reading the book, got a book by the title of that Lord. It's called Lord of the Flies. They make them read it in literature in high school. Lord of the Flies. Yeah, that Lord might be telling you stuff, but it ain't God. <laughs> the integrity of God's Word is paramount to the highest kind of faith. Amen. And you can't cheat over here when it's not convenient or what you want to do and expect to get the results over here that you want. Can I get three grunts, two old me's, and four help me Jesuses? <laughs> I didn't get any of those things. <laughs> two holy grunts. <laughs> All right, three omies and four. Help me, Jesus. Help me, help me Lord. Help me. All right. So, <clears throat> so Peter says there's a more sure word of prophecy. We have to believe what the word says, not what we think it says. Now, how many have ever quoted something you thought was Bible, went and found out later, won't want Bible at all? Now, especially young Christians do this. Yeah. Oh, I remember quoting as Bible fact that the Lord helps those who help themselves. Did you know that's not even a biblical principle? Right. <laughs> Forget the fact that it's not even in the Bible. You can't even get the principle out of the Bible. The Lord doesn't help those who help themselves. The Lord helps humanity because humanity can't help themselves. He is great. Listen, here's what grace empowers you to be able to do what God says do. You still have to make the choice to do it and start acting on it. His grace will empower. You can't do what God's asking you to do without His grace empowering you to do it. You can't follow the plans of God without His strength to empower you to do it. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. I don't care how much lye soap you use from Granny's kitchen. You can burn off all the top layers of skin, and you still won't be godly. Right. Because yeah. cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, you can't. We've got to get past. We've got to get past 
thinking we know what the Word says and know what it says if you're going to walk in faith. Having an opinion about what you think it says isn't good enough. Hello? Joshua 1 8, look here. Y'all getting anything yet? Amen. You come to our church and get stuff. It's amazing what you get when you show up. <laughs> Those people who didn't get here in time for dinner, I bet you're still hungry. Especially after you tell you about homemade chicken casserole, garden peas, corn, rolls, and sweet tea. Mm. Hallelujah. I saw some people going back for seconds. I saw Dick go back for seconds. <laughs> I've seen some else. He didn't, he, he didn't go back for seconds on the hot dogs and hamburgers. Chicken and pastry, I have to, we have to put a monitor on it when Dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing on you, Dick. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, we've had some, we've had fried chicken meals. We had to we had chase them down the parking lot and say, bring that back here. <laughs> oh. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law. Or, listen, you understand, at the time this was written, the only books they had were the five books of Moses and Job. That's it. So, this book of the law, or the word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Why? That thou mayest deserve to do according to all that's written therein. See, people don't like this. The Word of God says to meditate in the Word of God. Well, I don't like that. I just believe the Holy Ghost on the inside is enough. The Word of God says it ain't. Peter says it's not. Peter says we need Scripture. Amen? The thou mayest observe. Why you meditate? So you can do what it says do. <laughs> the whole purpose of meditation is so you know what's in there so you can go do it. And the reason people don't want written Bible is because they don't want to do anything. They want to tell pastors when they come in for counseling on their relationship status. And when they ask them, are you living together? They said, yeah. He said, that's your problem. They said, no, we're under grace. That, 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 that don't matter. We're under grace. You're living in fornication. <clears throat> but that doesn't matter because you're under grace. But you've got relationship problems. You've got more problems than you realize. <laughs> that was a real good place for help me, Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> Hallelujah. But notice he said... You'll meditate in the, uh, the book of all the Word of God. It shall not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do. Everybody say, to do. to do. According to all that is written therein. For then. Listen, this is a contingency here. People hate contingency. I don't believe there's anything in the Bible that's conditional. For the New Testament believer, because we're under grace. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whether he soweth to the, uh, soweth to the flesh, he shall of the flesh reap corruption. corruption. Yep. Now you, and now listen. Where are my black folks at? I need some, hallelujah, preach pastor. Is <laughs> 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 that P.B. Herman? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Pee Wee Herman giving an amen. Oh, Lordy. There's a help me Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's a help me Jesus there. <laughs> For then, listen, meditating and doing, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success, or the, the Hebrew says, deal wisely in the affairs of life. Peter said we got a more sure word of prophecy. I don't believe there's any, I don't believe in New Testament commandments. The only commandment we have is to love one another. Okay. Let me just blow you out of the water with a, a nuclear device. <laughs> just, just blow your theory out the way, just, just way out. Let's just annihilate it. Y'all like to annihilate dummies? Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the first verse says, Children, obey. That's not like a command to me. Your parents and the Lord, for this is right, honor thy father. So obey and honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. Stop right there. There is a commandment that, that Paul, pa Paul, the preacher of grace, quotes. Says it's the first commandment with promise. Tells them to obey a commandment that has a condition and a promise. Argument done. That's the only one. No, you said there's none. Your argument's done. You're, you're null and void. Hello? There are New Testament commandments other than walk in love. Y'all hear you're going home. See? It's not what you think it says, it's what it says. It's not what your opinion about it is, it's what does the Bible say. Mm -hmm. This right here is a commandment with a condition and a promise attached to it. So if you say there's not any, you just lied. Because there's one right there. Well, Paul's the preacher of grace. He wrote it. Paul didn't do that. <laughs> really? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints that are at Ephesus. Hello? Anybody say, duh. <laughs> so anybody that says, let's say there's no New Testament commandments. It's all about grace. Give them Ephesians 6, 1 and 2 uh, and 3. End of argument. Blah, 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 blah. There, there, that's only one. Oh, what about you said there's none. You, you're done. We have... We have to understand that God's Word does have conditions. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just, 1 John. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I know people teach some dumb stuff about that. 1 John 1 9 was not written to the sinner. No way. I said there's no way. You've got to know what the Bible says. Just because somebody has a, 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 a weird hairdo and a cool TV program don't mean they're right. <laughs> Hello? First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is, our, he is faithful and just forgive us our sins and to cleanse us to all, all of all unrighteousness. <clears throat> Let's go back up to verse 1, because we're talking about the integrity of the written word. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, that which we've looked upon and handled, and have handled the word of life, for that life was manifested. We've seen it, and her bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, which was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message we've heard of Him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His Son cleanses us from all sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, do we are, if to, uh, confess our sins, He is just and faithful, I'm sorry, if we, He is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His Word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Stop right there. The people who purport First John 1 9 is not for the believer, but for the sinner, say we cannot sin. You're, you're a prisoner of grace. You're a prisoner of salvation. It's impossible for you to sin once you're saved. He says if we, have, if we sin, we have an advocate. We know every sinner is already bound in sin. You don't confess your sins. Paul writes in Romans, the 10th chapter, 8th, 9th, and 10th verses, that you confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart, God's raised from the dead. That's what saves you. You can't confess all your sins. You couldn't confess them if you wanted to. Oh, please. You can't remember them all. <laughs> I, can you imagine Mr. C having to go back when he was six and remember what he did back then when he was wrong? Woo! Think 
at Mr. C when you get saved. Maybe it's, it's, it's kind of look at Mr. C. Think, he's not saved. Now for him to get saved, he's got to confess every sin he's ever committed. We just hope he keeps living long enough to get them all taken care of. This, this is not talking to people. We know Mr. C's been saved for a long time. Hallelujah. He's been saved some, long and some of y'all been alive. <laughs> How long you been saved, Mr. C? He was saved long as I've been alive. <laughs> Anybody here born before 1954? No. Lloyd, Benny, Mr. C. Ellie and Dick. Okay, they were children. <laughs> All right. Everybody else? He been saved long as you've been born. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He got saved the year my brother got born. Maybe you can talk to my brother. He needs some help. <laughs> Bring him yeah. <laughs> Bring him home. See, it's, it's not a matter of what you think the Word says. It's what the Word says yeah. that we act on. You've got to know what it says and know it in context and know what it means and be, and be aware of it in order to get results. Hello? Mm -hmm. It's important we stay with the Word. Stay with integrity and, and know what it says. Acts 17, look over there. Now, you know me, I always get on a little bit of a rabbit trail here and there on stuff. But, you know, this all has to do with the integrity of the Word of God. Acts 17, verses 11 and 12. Well, back up to verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas by way of Berea, who coming thither, <laughs> there's the just word thither, who coming thither, hither and thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word of God with all readiness of mind, and searched the, the what? The what? And the scriptures daily. Whether those things be, were so, therefore many of them believed. Also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men not a few. Think about that. They heard the word preached, received it with readiness of mind, but then they went and searched the scriptures. Not to find out what they thought it said, but to find out what they said. Dad Hagen said, don't you go tell anybody that, you know, uh, Hagen said this and Hagen said that. You find out what the Bible says yourself. Mm -hmm. You find out what the scripture says yourself. And act on it. Make it your word. Make it the word from you for yourself. That you find out for yourself. Not because Pastor Ed said it or Joe Morris said it or some traveling minister said it or some well-known minister said it on television. Find out for yourself. There's no, listen, there's no excuse for not finding out for yourself. What about people who don't speak, you speak a language the Bible's in? Let me say this. 90% of the world's population speaks French, English, or Spanish. We don't make doctrines in the church and change what the church does because of 10% of the people. We do what we need to do <clears throat> to get to those 10% and reach them. Mm -hmm. But you don't change everything because 90% of the world's population speaks either French, English, or Spanish, and we have Bibles in all those languages. And then there's umpteen different language Bibles for different dialects of different things all over the world. See, people bring this, what about the, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's like liberals. <laughs> yeah. We're going to tax everybody in the country because you got this one exception out here. My God, you know, let the church be the church. Let the church do something. You can't tax the whole nation because you've got one person here who need. I mean, how many businesses, uh, where is it now? Churches now. I, I think some churches in some states have to have access ramps to platforms now for the ADA rules. Well, what if the preacher's not disabled? Yeah. If he is, we'll build him a ramp. Now, everybody has to have equal access to everything. It's crazy. It is crazy. 
What if you don't have any crippled folk in your church? You got to put in a $20,000 ramp or eat up space. Uh-huh. Hello? If you, if you, listen, we didn't have a handicapped place out here. But Mr. C needed a little help right now uh, to get in easier. We, put us, we just put us one up and made one. They didn't have to come in here and paint it blue. Hello? Cost us three or four hundred dollars to have a special color put down on the pavement. We just put a sign on a cone, stuck it up there. Right. Eighteen dollars. <laughs> and it works. Yeah. Yes, sir. We did it. Listen, we did it because we wanted to. We wanted to help him. Amen. Not because some dodo brain sitting in some office said, yeah, everybody's got to have one of them. So, of course, when they get involved, then it's different. You know, that, that ramp out there, we, ha we asked the business partner to put that in for us. So, they, you know, we'd like to have one there. And they did it for us. You know, that was on them because we, we said we want to sign the lease, but you got to put a ramp in for us. We made them do it for us. Because we had somebody coming in in a powered wheelchair. And they had to part way down there and drive up the sidewalk. Well, help us out here. We, you know, we did it on our own. You don't have to have the government tell you. Right. Yeah, thank you. Something we wanted done. Right. We don't, have, we don't need somebody in, in, up in, in D.C. telling everybody what to do. Right. How did I get off on that? <laughs> because it's true. <laughs> yeah, but there's something else. I was, I was trying to make a point about something. <laughs> Dick, what was it? Uh -oh. You don't know, do you? <laughs> huh? Come on, help me out here, guys. Ron, what was I making a point about? <laughs> Prior to the ADA ramp, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, 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 Mister. <laughs> Dick's been gone ever since he found out he was six years old. And Mr. C got saved. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they search the scriptures daily. Yeah, yeah. daily. See, they want, they knew they needed to know what the Bible says for themselves, <laughs> not because somebody else just said it for them. There it is. They did it for themselves. They got to where it was imperative for themselves. I can't spoon feed you. Oh, oh, we got talking about people with a Bible and not having Bibles. And we're going to change the whole church doctrine and not have written Bibles anymore because 10% of the people in the world may not have a written Bible. So we all just need to be led by the Holy Ghost. And Brother Hagin used to say, that's ignorance gone with the seed. And Tommy Rot. That's Wycl like Wycliffe, 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 whatever they call them. Yeah. Bible translators, they have a whole school. There was a guy we knew about, he went down, he went to a country, lived with the people about four years, and in that four years' time, he took their, their, their symbolic language, created a written language, taught them their written language, and then translated the New Testament into their language. That's what you do. You don't not have the scriptures and say, oh, you just need the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if the church has a mission to keep, teach people, we go do what needs to be done. Went in, had to learn, had to learn their language first. Create a written language from their language. Teach them their written language, and then translate the Bible into their language. Yeah. That's a mission. That's a calling. That's how they see. But the, the Cherokee Bible came because they, they, the guy made the Cherokee language, wrote it, taught the people, and they, they translated the Bible into Cherokee. You got Cherokee Bibles now, written in Cherokee. Hello. We don't change. We don't do away with the authority and the integrity of the written word because somebody may not have one in their language. We do what needs to be done to make sure they get there. Either teach them our language. There you go. So they can learn it and, and read it. Which is kind of a two-way. You may need to do that in order to get somebody who knows how to create a language out of the language. Some things just, you know. But you do what you got to do. But you don't stop not having a written word because 
certain poor, you know, there's six to seven, by say six and a half billion people on the planet. I think, I think we hit seven billion last year. 10% is 700 million. We don't not have Bibles for the other 6.3 billion people because 700 million don't have one in a language they can read. Do we? No, we stay with the written word. Amen? The Bereans are more, <laughs> I'm just getting off on all kinds of stuff. <laughs> well, listen, folks, I am telling you, when I say these things, there's a reason. Because there's yo-yos out there using Facebook and Twitter and social networks to propagate all kinds of lunacy. And if you're not ready when it shows up, you might catch you off guard and you go, oh yeah, that's, that's right. You could just be caught in a gullible situation. Because let me tell you something. It's like liberalism. How many know it sounds good? Everyone has health care. Everybody has health care completely. Nobody goes without being able to see a doctor. Except everywhere it's been tried, they tell you at certain ages you can't have the operation. It costs too much money. You can't get the medicine. It costs too much money. You're not going to be able to have this operation. It costs too much money. And you have a bunch of people sitting in a room determining whether you live or die. And you can't, even, you can't go to the doctor and pay for yourself outside of it because they're owned by the government. And they're only allowed to operate and do what they do when the government tells them they can. I got friends who are missionaries live in foreign countries and just simple operations that could save their life or do whatever. They spend six months on a waiting list to get something done. A small tumor that could be removed. Six months on a waiting list. Are you here? And during that time, they go into a place where they almost die or do die. Well, if you're alive, when, you, when your name comes up, you get to have the operation. See, a lot of stuff sounds good. People say stuff about the Bible that sounds good. Hello? Y'all here, you go home. Oh, we just need the Holy Ghost on the inside to lead us and guide us. We don't need a written Bible. The Holy Ghost on the inside is going to lead you according to what's written in the Bible. And he'll point you right back to it. One, one person said recently, this is, this is talking about the integrity of the Word of God. One person said recently, um, anything that was said before Jesus' resurrection, we don't do. It's not relevant. Because it's before the New Covenant. Poor Jesus, Son of God, manifest in the flesh, having the wisdom and counsel of the Holy Ghost, told his disciples that the Holy Ghost was going to come after he left, was raised from the dead, and he would be sent to comfort them in a way that he comforted them while he was here in the flesh, and he was going to remind them of all the things he said. But of course, Jesus didn't know it wouldn't be important or relevant because it was prior to his resurrection. That's just ignorance on steroids. I forget gone. See, that's steroids. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to believe what the Word says, not what we think it says. We have to know what the written Word says. We have to be aware of what the Word says. That means you're going to have to get into the Bible. You have to study it. You have to be like the Bereans. Don't be a Thessalonican. Be a Berean. Have you noticed there's no Thessalonican Bible schools? <laughs> now the symbols of God have the Berean school of Bible. <coughs> Hallelujah. Berean Bible College. Why? Because they were more noble. Hello? Uh -huh. There's no Thessalonica Bible schools. <laughs> they weren't very noble. Right. Amen? John 8, 32. We're going to close. We got out early last week. I'm going to make up for it this week. Yeah, but Pastor, I went over to hear Pastor Hagen. Not all of you did. I was taking names and numbers.
Jesus said in John 8, 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Amplified Bible says set you free. King James says make you free. I'm going to tell you something, I get really irritated with, with the world misquoting this. They do it all the time. The truth will set you free. No, it won't. No, it won't. That's not what Jesus said. He said, if you continue in my word, are you here? Then you're my disciples, and you shall know the truth. <clears throat> the only way to know the truth is to continue in his word yeah. and be his disciple. That's right. Amen. Then you shall know the truth. Know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. It won't make you free unless you know it. And you can't know it unless you're his disciple. And you're not his disciple unless you will what? Continue in his word. Mm -hmm. It's not a disciple. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. <coughs> the truth doesn't set you free. I'm going to tell you something. Telling somebody their husband's running around on them don't set some, them free. It doesn't. See, that's, that's maybe the truth, but it doesn't set them free. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in another place, he says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. God's word will set you free. Re true facts are not liberators. I mean, we quote back, the truth will set you free. The truth don't set you free. There are conditions under which the truth sets you free. First, you continue in his word, which makes you what? His disciple. And then you shall know the truth. How? Because you continued his word and became his disciple. <clears throat> Did you know? We got people running around saying, ah, all we knew is get people saved. No, Jesus said, go in the word, make disciples of all men. He didn't say, go make converts. He said, disciples. It is more The mission of the church is not just get folks saved. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a limit, it's, it's a skewed vision, just get them saved. We're supposed to save them and train them and develop them. We're not supposed to just... Uh, it's like people, it's like me like women going here just having babies, leaving them out in the street saying, well, I had a baby. That baby's not going to make it unless it's taken care of. That baby's not going to grow unless it's taken care of. You just go win 20,000 people, Jesus, and leave them on their own. You've done them a, a, a disservice. We're supposed to disciple them and bring them up and train them. Jesus said, make disciples of men. Hello? That's what Jesus said. <clears throat> All I care about is getting the lost saved. Well, but you better follow after Jesus' command. Yeah, that's good. Get them saved and trained and developed. That's what the local church has a purpose. Yeah. Well, I don't believe in local church. I just believe in helping the evangelists get people saved. <clears throat> Who's going to train them? Who's going to develop them? <clears throat> Who's going to make sure they don't become the, the devil's uh, stomping ground? They're brought up in the local church. The Lord didn't, did you notice that the, the Bible did not say the Lord added to the family, such, daily such as we say, he added to the church. He brought them into the family of God, the church, where they were trained, developed, ministered to daily, such as should be saved. The assembly. They're brought into the assembly daily. You gotta stay with the Bible. If you're gonna have faith, it's gonna have to be Bible. Otherwise, you're just doing stuff that makes you feel good. 